Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to run. The run is definitely an important aspect to the vault. With all else being equal, the faster you can run, the higher you can vault. And this relation is not just a linear one. Physics dictates that the kinetic energy you build with your run increases exponentially with your speed. So little improvements in speed can make a big difference in your height. It's only been the last two years or so I've begun to work much on run mechanics with my vaulters, and this is mainly due to two reasons. First of all, I was never a runner myself, so I didn't know a whole lot about it. And secondly, with the short spring season, there always just seemed to be other aspects of the vault to work on that I thought would make more of an overall difference. But as my vaulters have gotten better and begun to train with me outside just the spring season, I've needed to expand my knowledge of run mechanics in order to help them. So I dove into the world of running, and what I found out is, is that there's a lot of information available online on sprinting and run mechanics. All of it is pretty good information, all of it's pretty consistent, and most of it is applicable to the pole vault. So for that reason, I won't go into all the detail of all that. Uh, likely you already know most of the basics of run mechanics anyways, and if you don't, well, the information is uh, available online. But what I will say about run mechanics is that I do now incorporate uh, running technique drills into most of my practices, uh, generally during the warm-up phase. And during sprint training, I do give the athletes reminders as, and cues as I see areas that need improvement. Now, aside from general run mechanics, I will touch on a few pole vault specific aspects of the run. The first is how to start the run. Now for the right-handed vaulter, you start with your left foot forward, you rock back onto your right foot, and then you take your first step with your right foot. Now you can add your own style to the start, but the left foot should not lift up off the ground. So in other words, I'm not a fan of skips or jumps or anything fancy like that at the start. Here Libby will be demonstrating how she starts her run. She's a right-handed vaulter, so she'll have her left foot forward. She'll rock back onto her right foot, take her first step with her right foot. Here Claire will be doing the same thing. Uh, the beginning of Claire's start looks very similar to Libby's, except Claire is a left-handed vaulter. So her right foot will be forward. She'll rock back onto her left foot and take her first step with her left foot. The second aspect of the pole vault run is that the run needs to be consistent. Probably the biggest contributor to having a consistent run is how the vaulter accelerates down the runway. If they start off too fast, like it's the 100 yard dash, that will cause some variability. If they start off unnaturally slow, then the same problem is likely. So I recommend that the athletes utilize a fairly quick but natural feeling acceleration in the run. Another contributor to consistency is keeping the run controlled. If the vaulters are trying to run so fast that they can't hold their form and control their run, then the run is going to be inconsistent. The third aspect of the pole vault run is that the run needs to accelerate into the vault. The best way to check for this is to look for and listen to the cadence of the vaulters run. If the cadence of the run slows down, that's bad. If the cadence stays the same, then that's also bad. So the cadence should always be increasing. Now, if the cadence of the vaulter is slowing down, uh, this is usually because they're intimidated or unsure in some way. So if that's the case, you need to talk with the vaulter and, um, and figure out what the problem is there. If the cadence of the vaulter is staying the same, this probably means that either the run is too long, such that they've reached their max velocity and can no longer continue to accelerate, or it might be just that they're having an off day or they're not putting enough energy into the run. But again, the cadence of the run should increase right into the takeoff. The last point I'll touch on regarding the pole vault run is that the run needs to be tall. 
Some athletes naturally run with an excessive forward lean, and for some, an incorrect pull carry or plant can cause a forward lean, or sometimes even a backward lean. But leaning forward or backward causes problems with the plant and takeoff. So make sure your vaulters are running tall and vertical. To get vaulters started on the run, I'll go over with them the key aspects of the run that I just described to you. I'll do a quick review of the pole carry and then have them begin to practice it. And what I'll usually do is have them do 10 step pole runs like you've been watching Claire and Libby do for the past few minutes. Once the vaulters have become somewhat comfortable with the pole runs, I'll start to identify areas of their run that need work, keeping in mind that the run should be consistent, controlled, tall, and always accelerating. Also that the pole carry should be comfortable and have a minimal impact on the run. I can then address areas that, that need work with cues and common run mechanic drills. Uh, just be sure that the athletes know what the purpose of each drill is before you have them do it. If you're like I was and need to get up to speed on sprint mechanics, the following two online resources are ones that I found to be pretty helpful. The first is an article on Simply Faster that outlines the Altus Kinogram method, uh, which is a method for analyzing sprint technique. And the second is a, a YouTube video that goes over as a coach how you can use this method to help your athletes. This video has been a production of the Shiawassee Vault Club, and we really hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Until then, have fun, be confident, and vault high.